Okay, how you doing? So I have the same exact quadratic trinomial that I factored using the AC method. Um, and really it all just comes down to personal, personal preference, which you like to use. I am more of like a guess and check guy. But what we always need to understand is that this middle term is always going to be a product, okay, of the factors of your leading term and your constant. That is how we always form this uh, middle term. So knowing that beforehand, if I take a look at this, what are the factors, okay? And uh, the factors of x squared we already know are going to be x and x. So if I begin to take a look at this problem, when I multiply I'm going to have to have an x and I'm going to have to have an x there, okay? Now the next thing I need to take a look at, okay, what number goes here and what number goes there? Like, is it 6 and 1? Is it, you know, 3 and 2? Which is it? Well, we just start to guess and check. So literally what I normally do is I put the 6, I'll list the factors, so I get 2 and then 3, okay? And this is just the guess and check method. And then I take a look at 8 and I go, okay, what are the factors of 8? So 1 and 8, 2 and 4, okay? And the only thing that I'm going to do now is that I'm going to try to... Uh, just guess and check, really. So these factors, okay, remember that if I take a look up here, this, is, this number is always going to multiply some constant, and the other factor of this leading term, okay, is going to multiply the other constant. So I'm just going to do that down here. So I'm going to take one of these and multiply it by another and see if I can make negative 19. So here we go. Um, <clears throat> there are some things that you may have learned in algebra 1 that if this is ever positive and this is negative, that this down here is going to be having both the negative uh, factors. So I'm automatically just going to go like this. Okay, put those negatives in there. Um, so 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 6 and negative 8 is negative, 40, is negative 48. Negative 48, negative 1 do not make 19. 1 and negative 2 is negative 2. 6 and negative 4 is negative 24. So negative 24 and negative 2 does not make negative 19. Now, the reason I'm going through this quickly is just to simply show you that really I'm doing all this work in my head. I'm not going to always sit, you know, I'll list them out, but I'm going to do the work in my head like I'm doing out loud. Okay, but now I'm just, okay, I've exhausted 1 and 6 with everything, so I'm done with this coordinate pair. So then I go to this. So now I know it's going to have to be 2 and 3 and something. So let's check. So 2 times negative 1, it's negative 2. 3 times negative 8 doesn't work either. That gives me 3 and negative 8 gives me negative 24. So negative 24 and negative 2 is negative 26. I switch the roll again. So now I do 2 times negative 8, which is negative 16. 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3. So negative 3 and negative 16 makes negative 9. So I now know that 3 times negative 1, and then I get 2 times negative 8. So remember what I said. So these here come from this list, which is 6, which is part of the first term. So these are it. So 3 and 2. And remember that when you do these problems, that this leading coefficient always multiplies the constant, but the constant is going to be over here. So 3 minus 1. And in this case, I had negative 8. So the 2 multiplies the negative 8. And then there is my factored expression. And that's using the guess and check method. Would you prefer to use? I, you know, it's up to you. But for me, I just like to guess and check because I like to go, I can go through these relatively quickly. The AC method, I think, takes longer, and if I'm on a test, I want to get through some things as quick as possible so I can finish my test. Okay, I hope that helps.